Live from the campus of Pepperdine University here in Firestone Fieldhouse, this is Blue and Orange Madness, the 2019 edition, where we all, as part of Waves Weekend, get excited for the new year for the men's and women's basketball teams and celebrate Pepperdine. I'm Paxton Ritchie here alongside. And I'm Carl Winter. Yeah, just excited to be here. It's a great atmosphere here in Firestone Fieldhouse. Always one of the most exciting athletic events on the calendar, especially in terms of student participation. It's a packed house here as we anticipate the, uh, the beginning of Waves Weekend and the, the official kickoff of the women's and men's basketball seasons. Absolutely. Changes for the women's team, a brand new coaching staff. They're picked tied for sixth overall in the coaches poll and the men are picked fourth. Right, yeah, but intriguing squads on both sides. The women um, losing their, their best player from last season, Yasmin robinson Baco, who graduated, losing their head coach, Delisha Milton-Jones, who took a job at Syracuse. Um, so it's going to be kind of, can they bounce back with a new coaching staff and a lot of new players? And on the men's side, can they continue this meteoric rise, a 10-win improvement last year? Absolutely. We'll have much more from uh, both teams. We'll be interviewing both coaches here on our broadcast, Lorenzo Romar and Kristen Dowling. We'll also have Mia Sadie from the women's team and Colby Ross from the men's team later on tonight. Uh, but it's not just about the basketball teams. Right now we have lots of Pepperdine events as part of Waves Weekend, Parents Weekend here. And uh, right now on the court, we're doing the presentation of the Waves Court where uh, Waves King and Queen are nominated and voted on by the students. Right, yeah, I think the beginning of the, of the nomination process is professors that nominate, I think, the 16 students that are nominated at the start, and then it comes down to, through a couple of rounds of voting, one guy and one girl for Waves King and Queen here, essentially the, the homecoming of Pepperdine University, and they're about to be announced here at Firestone Fieldhouse. Yep. Last year, my, my uh, old RA from freshman year was the Waves King. It was very cool to see him get that honor. Yeah, and my spiritual life advisor from last year, Ben Hancock, is one of the nominees for the Waves King tonight, so I'll be pulling for him. That's who I voted for. All right, well, they're announcing the nominees right now. We'll turn it over to the court for just a second. Congratulations to Kelly Warren and Grayson Beeman for winning the Waves King and Queen for 2019 and 2020. Uh, that's just the first of many things to come here on our broadcast tonight. Uh, next is a performance by the Pepperdine Cheer Team and still ahead, uh, the introduction of the men's and women's basketball teams, the shooting contest, the dunk contest, interviews with players and coaches, so much more. 
Carl, what, what, what thing are you looking forward to most about tonight? Oh, it's got to be the dunk contest, absolutely, to see. We've got a couple of high flyers on this men's basketball team, and just to see what they've put together and what they're going to throw down tonight. Um, but also just to get a good conversation in with the coaches and with Colby and Mia and just see what they're looking forward to um, for the season. It's still about a month away, but, but uh, I think all of us are excited for the upcoming season for both teams. I mean. Last year was the first time in 15 years that both the men's and women's team made it to the semifinals in the West Coast Conference. So just to see this year if they can replicate that um, and continue to build as programs. Absolutely. Talking about that dunk contest, Kessler Edwards won it last year. Uh, as a freshman, turned out that was just a preview of, of all the highlights he would give us uh, during the regular season. We've got. I'm sure both the Edwards brothers will want to win it this year, along with uh, Andre Ball. There's so, so many choices. Yeah, I think Andre Ball definitely could give them a run for their money. And we saw Victor Ohio Obioha throw down some big ones last year, especially off of lobs. So maybe that's a little more conducive to a dunk contest. So I'm excited to see what Victor has to bring tonight, too. Absolutely. I, was, I, I got a chance to watch uh, some of the dunkers warming up uh, before we got started here tonight. And I think uh, they're going to put on quite a show for us. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. We'll be talking to Colby as that goes on, and I'm sure he'll give us some insight on, on who he likes to throw lobs to and who's really going to gonna pull away. But it, impressive from Kessler last year winning it as a freshman. Absolutely. Speaking of putting on a show, the Pepperdine cheer team performing for us right here. It's a much bigger squad than the one that debuted a year ago. It's great. It's very encouraging to see. Uh, right. All their high-flying stunts that they're capable of. Right, just the second year we've seen the cheer team back at Pepperdine, and yeah, new and improved for sure. Going back to the uh, basketball teams for the home openers for each team. Uh, the women, they have an exhibition game against Viola. That's on October 29th. And they travel to Washington State for the first game of the season. Their home opener is against Hawaii on November 10th. And for the men, their uh, home opener, well, they begin the season at Cal Berkeley, a Pac-12 opponent. It's one of three Pac-12 opponents on the schedule this year. That's November 5th. And they open November 9th at home uh, against UC Irvine, which was an NCAA tournament team last year. Right, yeah, I think the women are looking forward to starting it off against a Pac-12 team, and the men as well, both on the road. The women are going to get a rematch of last year's game against Hawaii, which they won in their season opener on a game-winning shot. Um, and then the men, also with three Pac-12 teams, a good non-conference schedule. I'm sure they have the date circled when they take on Arizona to kick off the Wooden Legacy. That's going to be a really big one for this program. Oh, absolutely. you got to love preseason tournaments. As uh, Right now in the arena, they are uh, showing you the intro video that we played for you before we started our broadcast. It's the first time uh, everybody here in Firestone Fieldhouse has seen it. And... Uh, you're seeing it on the screen as well. Year after year, uh, Blue and Orange Mat is just a highlight on the calendar. Uh, the Firestone Fieldhouse is packed, it's loud, it's, it's proud, the energy is all over the place. And uh, we're, we're seeing the Riptide Rally crew come out, uh, Pepperdine's biggest fans. Their orange jumpsuits. Yeah, absolutely. And we, I mean, this is a great kickoff for the Waves weekend with the parents and alumni here in attendance. Hopefully, we can get Firestone Fieldhouse this crowded for a game or two this year. I think we're all looking forward to when the Gonzaga Bulldogs come to town and we're nationally televised yeah, here. Yeah, that would be fantastic. It was actually just announced today that the Pepperdine home basketball game against Gonzaga will be on ESPN. So we have to make sure that. Uh, Firestone Fieldhouse is just as crowded uh, for that game as it is for tonight's festivities. We're nearing the moment where uh, the men's and women's teams are introduced for the first time. Uh, you can see uh, the cheerleaders, rally crew, and all these fans here in Firestone Fieldhouse waiting in anticipation uh, for their team. I think uh, high hopes and for, for both teams this year. Both teams really uh, feel like they have a chance to have a fresh start and really make something of themselves this season. Right, the men were one of only nine Division I schools last year to win at least 
10 games more than the previous season, and they were picked by multiple polls, or the, the coaches poll, and then multiple magazines to finish in the top four in the West Coast Conference, um, which is a significant achievement, pretty tough conference. Yeah, if you, if you think about uh, finishing eighth last season, fourth would be a huge achievement. But we start with the women's roster and Destiny McAllister. McAllister, a freshman, one of the few freshmen on this squad out of Brentwood High in Los Angeles. Jada Rufus Milner is next out. Uh, she's on the team along with her twin sister. Both of them redshirted last year. We'll be looking to see more of the court this year. Right. Jada and Jayla, it's hard to tell them apart. Both five foot ten. I know they both bring the energy though. They both work uh, in athletics and they're at volleyball and soccer games. Yeah, uh, bringing the energy for Pepperdine Sports. Two of the most animated players on the bench last year, even though they were both redshirting. Now Absolutely. we have Cheyenne Givens, who is a very exciting newcomer, a transfer um, out of junior college. She put up 23 a game last year for LA Trade Tech and shot 36% from long range. So could definitely add a scoring boost. Malia Bambrick coming out now. She's a sophomore this year, and boy, was she an impact player as a freshman. All WCC freshman team last year was Bambrick. Definitely expecting big things from her from the new staff. Monique Andriolo is the next out. Andriolo, one of three Aussies on the team, along with uh, Mia Sadie and Daniela Milicic. So we'll be talking to Mia later on in the show, and here she is coming out. Mia Sadie. Another one of those Australians, as Carl was pointing out. Right, five foot ten from Western Australia, the city of Perth. She started 17 games last year as a sophomore. Tara Ducharme, another new face for the Waves. Yeah, and she's going to bring some size for this team. Six foot five and a transfer from the University of St. Louis. And there's Melissa, the third of the Aussies. She's six foot four out of Sydney, Australia, a transfer from USC. She graduated from USC last season, so she is now a redshirt senior. Carl, if you think about having a first-year coaching staff, these transfers are all going to be really important to building this program. Uh, Kirsten Dowling didn't have a lot of time to recruit this season, taking the job in July. She's going to be relying on these transfers. Right, and you saw another one there, uh, number uh, 24, Hannah Friend, who is a transfer from Sacramento State, another redshirt senior. She led Sacramento State in scoring with 18 points per game as a sophomore. Paige Fesky back for the Waves. She uh, had limited action. She was injured last year, uh, missed a chunk of the year, but she'll no doubt be looking to redeem herself, be a big part of uh, this Waves culture for the new right. staff and the new team. Absolutely. Paige only played six games before getting injured, so she was able to get a medical hardship waiver and come back for a redshirt senior season. Uh, Deja Battle, who just came out, and Barbara Satongan, who is uh, coming out of the tunnel now. Uh, both big parts of last year's team with Delisha Milton-Jones, both uh, ball handling guards who can shoot the three. Dynamic players, Deja Battle was uh, last year put up nine per game and shot 37% from three in her first year at Pepperdine after transferring from uh, junior college. And, and there, sorry, there you see Kirsten Dowling uh, in her first season as the Pepperdine head coach coming out. Uh, she is no stranger to Pepperdine. She was a graduate assistant for two seasons and an assistant coach for two seasons. She now returns for a third stint. This time it's the head coach. Here come the men's basketball team getting ready to take the field and be introduced. First up is the freshman from Arizona, Mayak Dang. Dang, one of the freshmen that Lorenzo Romar has recruited in his second year. Here's another one of them. Jan yep. Zedek. Yeah, Zedek uh, hails from uh, the Czech Republic, um, from Prague, and his father, uh, Jiri Zedek, won a national championship at UCLA and was a first round draft pick in the NBA. Basketball pedigree for sure. Another freshman, uh, an accomplished California high school player, Cedric Altman, uh, wearing his number zero in the Pepperdine at Waves Orange. Put up 28 and 7 last year as a senior at uh, Colony High School in Ontario. Here also comes, scored come. 51 a game last year one time. That'll, that'll get you a D1 offer for sure. Here comes Everett Perot, 
redshirt freshman. Used his red shirt last year. We'll be looking to see the court. And here's sophomore walk-on and Pepperdine fan favorite as you listen to this crowd. Jay Yoon returns for his second blue and orange madness at Pepperdine. Yeah, Yoon played in eight games last year, put up 20 and nine as a senior in high school, and he was born in South Korea. Another impact sophomore, Victor Ohia Obioha. He was automatic off lobs last year for the Waves. And you see him breaking it down for the crowd. Ohio Obioha, high flyer and a rim protector. Definitely going to need him in the paint this season. Daryl Pope Jr. going by DJ Pope this year. He had some big shots down the stretch for Pepperdine last year. Another sophomore guard who's going to see some time. Yeah, averaged 18 minutes a game last year. Had some big ones down the stretch, including in the WCC tournament. Here you see Jackson Stormo coming out. Sophomore big man. Appeared in 20 games last year. And now you see Kessler Edwards coming out. Kessler was a preseason pick for the all WCC second team. He is of course here with his twin brother Cam, who made the third team in the preseason. Yeah, Kessler was all WCC freshman team last year. Tremendously athletic player. And there's Andre Ball, number 10 coming out. Ball played in 30 games last year as a freshman and can definitely be a dynamic player. Absolutely. Ball, of course, has three famous cousins, Lonzo, Leangelo, and Lamelo. He's looking to forge his own path here at Pepperdine. Here's a junior walk-on, Michael Wexler. Wexler appeared in eight games last year. He also represents men's basketball on the Waves Leadership Council. Here's a transfer, the first uh, of our transfers to appear this year, Skylar Chavez, number 33. Chavez, a sharpshooter. Last year led the state at the junior college level in scoring, put up 28 a game, shot 53% from the field, 40% from three, and 87% at the free throw line. Here's one half of the Waves starting backcourt, Jody Smith, uh, junior out of Oakland, California. He'll have a big part of the Waves ball handling and playmaking duties here this season. One of three returning starters along with Edwards and of course this guy, number four, Colby Ross. Colby Ross enters his junior season, uh, all but a shoe in to break the all-time scoring and assist records uh, by the time his career is over. Uh, he's got a lot of hype around him this year. One of the best players Pepperdine's seen in a very long time come through campus. All WCC first team last year as a sophomore, averaged 19 and seven. Led the WCC in assists and was sixth nationally in assists. So he's the leader of this team. Absolutely, we expect this guy to be pretty important too, Keith Smith. Uh, he was a transfer at Oregon last year. And he sat out last season, he'll be coming back. He has final four experience that'll be invaluable uh, to this team. And now Robbie Skeet comes yeah, out. Yeah, and then you see Robbie Skeet, a fan favorite, the rare walk-on senior, three years he didn't play here at Pepperdine, and then he walks on this year. And now Cameron Edwards comes out. Always the leader of the dance party, Cameron Edwards. He's a redshirt senior, a very important player to Pepperdine. We'd love to see him healthy for a full season. Right, He's made a third team LWCC, as we mentioned. And here's President Jim Gash coming out. Uh, to a hero's welcome with a cartwheel. Edward is one of only two seniors on the team, and the other is Skeed, who's, a, like we said, a walk-on senior. And President Gash is going to quickly become a fan favorite here at Pepperdine. Without a doubt. Here's uh, Coach Romar making his entrance for his second season of his second stint here at Pepperdine, uh, making the trot out to midcourt. And leading his coaching staff along with him. Well, there you have it, the 2019 and 2020 men's and women's basketball teams for Pepperdine Waves. Uh, all sorts of excitement for the new season. Uh, we're going to have President Gash and uh, Coach Romar speak to the crowd here shortly, and we'll be uh, starting to uh, have people filter over for some interviews. Uh, once again, we'll be hearing from both coaches and a player from each team. Looking forward to it. We'll see what President Gash and uh, Coach Romar have to say to the crowd, and we're also going to see while we're talking to Coach Romar, our students going to get the opportunity to take a half court shot for tuition here. Oh, at absolutely, Pepperdine. what an opportunity! One shot, one chance. Yeah, tuition no, for a year. Don't really get a chance to practice. They choose who's going to shoot randomly just before the event, so kind of just luck of the draw. 
Uh, I've done a, it's my third blue and orange madness, and I yet to see a shot hit any part of the basketball hoop. So I'm really looking for that streak to break into that. Right, and the parent gets a chance to take a yep. shot too as well. So we have at least two chances. Maybe someone will at least get one close and get the crowd fired up. We all want to see a Lorenzo Romar. Uh, he knows how to fire. Oh yeah, he, he's ad living right now, and he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. We'll, uh, we'll let you listen in to uh, uh, talk to the Pepperdine students. We'd like to shoot three-pointers. More importantly, we'd like to make them. Here's what we need for you to do. As you see the action taking place and the ball being passed to one side or another, when you see that player in position to come up and take the three-point shot, And you need to say, Boo! Okay, now wake up. Now we're on the team. Now we gotta do this together. Okay? The ball is passed. It goes to one of the players about to shoot the three. Here we go. Okay. Great. Now when it goes in, you see when the referee holds both hands up, that means it's three-point goal that was made. So when you see that, that oh turns into ho! We ready? The ball is passed to the shooter. Ho! Okay. All right, you're in the ballpark. Now we're going to let you do it in real time. Drive and keep through. Let's go.
we certainly hope that uh, Johnny Smith to Colby Ross to Skylar Chavez connection happens a lot more times this year than just tonight. Uh, always great to hear Lorenzo Romar talk. And Jim Gash is going to get a chance to address the crowd soon. Yeah, and to see the fast-paced play last year was just really impressive with a team that, after kind of playing a slow pace two years ago, last year just really picked it up. They shoot a lot of threes in transition. Um, just a really exciting team to watch. And then to bring in a guy like Skyler Chavez, who shot 40% from three last year in junior college, put up 28 a game, could just be a game changer, even if he doesn't start to come off the bench and just be a spark for this team. One thing's for sure, this team is going to be fun to watch offensively. You see the NBA moving towards pace and space. That's exactly what we see from this Pepperdine roster. Yeah, and I, you, I mean, you, you said it right there. It's just a kind of a changing of the culture here. Uh, there was one stat that I saw that jumped out at me. Josh Smith, two years ago, hit one three, and last year he hit 26 as a sophomore. There you um, go. So just a complete 180 um, in this program. We're going to see this team um, spreading it out and running the floor and we have we have the guys to do it with Colby Ross and, and Josh Smith handling the ball. Plenty of talented players on this roster uh, as we get ready for the, uh, I believe this is the uh, half court shot for tuition. But uh, yeah, going back to the playmakers on this team as uh, Coach Romar is just about to join us actually, so we're gonna, we're gonna run to that. Yeah. The coach Romar is just sitting down with us. Can you hear us, coach? All right, we'll turn your mic on. Can you I hear can us hear all right? I can hear you just fine. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by, coach. We appreciate it. So this is your, your second season or your second stint here at Pepperdine. What's the, what's the, what are some of the biggest changes from year one leading a program to year two leading a program? Well, the biggest change, and it's very evident as we started to practice, is the better understanding of what we want to do on the basketball floor, off the basketball floor. The things that we took us several weeks to teach in the beginning last year, our guys already knew it. So the familiarity with, uh, with our concepts and philosophy is very evident. And coach, I just wanted to ask you about the, the recruiting class that you brought in this year with exciting guys like Mayock and Jan. And of course, Skyler is going to be a game changer. Um, so what are you excited about with those three guys coming in? Well, I'm excited the, the fact that they can all bring something to the table to make us a better team. You know, Maju can shoot the basketball. He is uh, he has a super motor. I mean, he really works hard. He rebounds the ball. He does the little things to help you win. Skyler, I mean, he can really shoot the basketball. He has a beautiful jump shot, but can create his own shots and Jan Zedek from Czech Republic is right there in terms of a shooter with Skyler at six foot nine and that's a great weapon to have and then Cedric Altman is uh, one of our best athletes on the team super defender but yet he averaged 29 points a game in high school you were talking uh, just when you were addressing the crowd there about how you you guys want to shoot the three you want to play fast so if the team's firing on all cylinders what type of game do you want to see from them? Well, it all starts with our defense. If we're not guarding, we're not going to be able to run the way we want to run. But we have to be able to make other teams uncomfortable when they have the basketball. And if we're doing that, I think our uh, brand of basketball becomes very exciting. I think you'll see dunks, you'll see great passes, a lot of that. But if we have to start it out on the defensive end. And coach, this team has a lot of hype coming in. A, a number of polls, including the WCC coaches poll, have you guys at number four um, in the conference. So do you think that adds pressure or that adds motivation for your guys? I think it, it adds motivation. This is a team that uh, hasn't experienced anything like that. And, and mind you, it's just a prediction. We didn't finish fourth. We haven't done anything yet. The last thing we did was finish eighth last year. But it does make our guys kind of uh, see how others perceive us and in that way it can give you a little more confidence. As you, you sort of alluded to this already, uh, the polls pick you to finish fourth. What are your expectations? What do you want to see from, from this group of guys? I want us at the end of the year to say we ended up being the best possible team that we could be for that personnel, for that makeup of that team, we reached our potential. 
And coach, one guy that I just wanted to ask you about real quick um, before we close is, is Keith Smart and, and or Keith Smith and how uh, the impact he's going to make here after sitting out a year and seeing what your program's like to get out on the court and just ball this year. Well, obviously Keith wasn't a newcomer in terms of coming out of another program. He was with us last year, but he uh, redshirted due to transfer rules. Keith is a player, is kind of like a Swiss Army knife. He can do a little bit of everything. He has a high basketball IQ. He's played at the highest level in the Pac-12 at Oregon for a couple of years. So he knows what it takes to be successful. And we're very confident that he's going to share that knowledge and that information with the rest of his team. All right, Coach, uh, I just wanted to say real quick, I'm, I'm from Washington State. Yeah, okay. So so I've uh, you were the coach at UW all growing up, and I was in kindergarten the year that uh, you guys were the number one seed oh, in March wow, Madness. Oh, wow, 2005. So I, yep, yeah. and I, I remember uh, uh, we didn't have school that day because we were sitting and watching on TV. So, no way. So to be sitting here talking to you all these years later is pretty surreal. So That's I all right. That's all right. You You've done well time. for yourself, I see. <laughs> I'm doing my best. All doing right. my best. Yeah, thank you for stopping by, Coach. We really appreciate it. Good luck this season. Thanks for having me. Anytime, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. All thank right. you. All right, that was Coach Lorenzo Romar as he uh, gets the wave set for another season, his second in charge. And just a reminder, they do open here at home November 9th versus UC Irvine. Oh, that was oh, the closest wow. one yet. There it is. He, he hit the rim. He hit the rim. So, so we did break my streak. Wow, yeah, that's close. Yeah, that was I, almost I, there. I saw I, the the parent at first. He didn't come anywhere near close. And then President Gash. President Gash might try one. President Gash's uh, first attempt looked pretty good. It was right on line, but a little short. Let's see how this one goes. President Gash was definitely practicing before the game too, so he's uh, he's getting himself ready. Right, he has a little bit of a better chance than the student in Perry, and he just had to had one go of it. President Gash comes in here in the Firestone Fieldhouse and, and shoots around pretty much every morning at about 6 a.m., so he's definitely getting his shots up and working on his jumper throughout the week. Well, and then President Gash has only been inaugurated for a, a couple weeks here, but one thing I've noticed about him is he, he's a fixture at Pepperdine Sporting Events. Uh, he loves coming out and supporting. doesn't matter if it's uh, basketball, soccer, volleyball. He loves to do it all. And we're just about to be joined by uh, women's head coach Kristen Dowling here. Can you hear us okay? I can, Kristen. Kristen, so nice to meet you. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, your first year as the head coach of Pepperdine. You've been around here before, but this is your, your first year in charge. Uh, what's it like uh, coming in and inheriting a program and, and sort of managing that transition? Yeah, I mean, I'm very grateful to be back. Pepperdine is a very special place to me. Um, I never thought I would be back, and just I think you make the big time where you are, and I'm just so grateful to be back. And obviously, Pepperdine, um, you know, they had a great year last year, one of the best years they've ever had, Sweet 16 of NIT. And we return a lot of players, so we're incredibly excited for this future. And it's, it's fun to walk into a program that is that way. Yeah, and coach, I wanted to ask you, you only got hired in you only got hired in July just three months ago. Um, and I wanted to ask you about the class coming in. Um, we have some transfers, some redshirt seniors. Did you recruit any of these new players that are coming in this year? Uh, no, they were already recruited, but we're so glad they are here. Uh, we got three grad transfers and then uh, you know there were we also have a, a sophomore transfer and a freshman that we are very thankful they are here. So we actually have seven new players to the court this year for the Waves, which were all very talented. We're very excited they're here. So you, uh, obviously you take over, you change the culture here, you change the type of basketball. What uh, sort of brand of basketball do you want your team to play this season and, and moving forward for as long as you're here? Yeah, I mean, in terms of, you know, when I came in, I wanted to really evaluate the players that we already have here and what's going to play, what's going to make them successful is really up-tempo, which is what we want to play. We want to attack the rim, we want to go to the basket hard, and then want to be defensive-minded, aggressive on the ball, and our strength is speed, and uh, so we're really excited to get up and down the court. So. Yeah. So that's what we're going to try and bring, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I think people are going to love watching us play. Yeah, and Coach, you mentioned that you're inheriting a program that was very successful last year, making it all the way to the semifinals of the West Coast Conference. Um, and 
not only um, did Coach Delisha leave, but also our best player, Yasmin, graduates. Um, so what's it like trying to pick up the slack for a player that put up um, a big chunk of the points and, and just trying to patch that with exciting players coming back? Um, just trying to fill that void. Totally, I mean, she's one of the best players in the history of Pepperdine, right? So right. that is definitely uh, a, a gap to fill. You know, we're not only do we have all the returners that we had from last year, um, you know, seven returners, we have seven new talented players, three of which were grad transfers. Um, and we also returned Paige Feske, who was a WCC honorable mention the year before, uh, not last year, but the year before she didn't play last year. So we added, uh, you know, we return a lot, but we also added a lot. Uh, experience and age, so we're very grateful for that. So you guys are uh, picked six, tied for six in WC polls. I know that doesn't matter too much to you guys on the inside. So what would your definition of a successful first year be? You know, uh, this team is hungry to get back to where they were last year. Um, in terms of what's going to be successful to me, I think if we play hard and we do the best we can, we get after it, we're prepared. We're gonna have a successful year. We buy in, we're together. Um, we give it our all. Like the results are gonna come, you know. And honestly, we'd much rather be the hunter than the hunted. So we're excited for that. And then I just wanted to ask a question about uh, the schedule. You guys start off with a Pac-12 team in Washington State, have some other good matchups against postseason teams from last year. And then the, the WCC this year might not be the most top-heavy conference, but very deep with good teams at the top. Um, Pacific's going to have a bounce back here this year. Gonzaga and BYU are always good. So what are you looking forward to on the docket this year? Yeah, I mean, so WCC, right, uh, number one mid-major conference in the country, six women's teams went to the postseason last year. So very strong from top to bottom, there's not going to be such thing as a night off, but that's kind of far off for us right now, we look one thing at a time, so we're incredibly excited about our opener at Washington State, Pac-12, number one conference in the country, um, so it's going to be a great opportunity for us to really challenge ourselves on the road with, in a good conference, good team, so we're very excited to start there, um, and then also, you know, there's obviously a lot of great stuff coming after that, we get to go to New Mexico State, which Deja Battles from New Mexico, one of our senior guards, so um, we got a lot to look forward for, but we're going to take it one day at a time. Awesome. Well, you guys open up. Uh, you have the exhibition game against Biola, and you guys, your home openers here against Hawaii, which you guys played last year. It's a very close game. Um, so you have a, a message for the fans coming out to Firestone Fieldhouse to see your team play? Just, we, we need your support. You know, we need our students' support, we need our community support, and I think you're really gonna love our girls and who they are as young women. I also think you're gonna enjoy watching us play. You know, there's gonna be a lot of passion, and a lot of hard work, a lot of teamwork. So just come on out and support us, give us a chance. Awesome, well, thank you so much for stopping by, Kristen. It's very nice to meet you, and appreciate you taking the time. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thanks yeah. for having me. Go Waves. Yep, hope you're enjoying the first blue and orange madness. Oh, yeah. yes, thank you. This Pepperdine women's head coach, Kristen Dowling, getting ready for her first season in charge, as we mentioned earlier. Two years as a Pepperdine graduate assistant, two years as a Pepperdine assistant coach two separate stints. Yeah, and she inherits a team that last year, she, they're returning nine players from a squad. And here's one of them, Mia Sadie's yep. a returner. And Mia Sadie's joining us. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So uh, obviously, number one thing, you guys have a new coaching staff this year. So yeah. as somebody who was on the team last year, what do you think is the biggest adjustment with the new staff coming in? Um, I'd say the biggest adjustment would be just, I think the style of play we're playing this year, um, they've actually brought in height, um, and so that's something we ha have never really had in the league before, so we've got like the bigs, we've got the guards, we've got the shooters, so like this year we're covering like every, you know, position on the court. And then Mia, I just wanted to ask you about, about your background and what it was like uh, growing up and playing in Western Australia and being joined um, this year by two country women, Monique who was on the team last year and now Danny. Um, so what was it like growing up and playing there and then, and then coming this far for college ball? Um, well, I've always dreamt of like coming to play uh, in America for college. Like I wrote that in my year seven goals in high school. Um, I grew up with basketball in my blood, like my dad was a professional basketballer, my brother played it, my mom played a little bit, so I think I was practically born into it. Um, I played against Monique 
for a couple of years back home when we would play, when I would represent Western Australia and she would represent Victoria. Um, so like having that relationship coming in was quite, made the transition quite easy, coming from a different country and everything. And then the adding, <laughs> nice. Sorry, sorry. Barb no, no, I just got that. All right, so, and then adding um, Danny this year, like the other Aussie, um, you know, she's been here, this is her fifth year across wow. from home. And so um, having the knowledge and everything um, that she like gives me and everything about like being so far away from home and like, you know, you still get homesick three years later. And like just having those people makes it like just that little bit easier. Well, we just saw the, the Pepperdine shooting contest. Yeah. Who's your pick for best shooter on the team? On my team? Yeah. Um, I'm torn between Deja, who we call Bubba, and Paige. Got to go with the seniors. That was Paige hit the half-court shot, right? Yeah, or she hit it. That was Paige, right? Yeah, she practices it. Like, she's a bucket. They okay, both are buckets. Okay, there you go. That's the secret. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. Of course. Yeah, and then speaking of shooting, um, you guys lost a big player last year in Yasmin who graduated. Um, so what's it like trying to fill the void of a player that provided that much of a scoring punch last year? Um, obviously, we've lost like a massive part, and like not only a teammate, like she was a sister to us, like helped us on the court, off the court. So um, I think like the biggest thing, obviously we missed that scoring, but that opens up opportunities now for us to, you know, all of us to step up and take that opportunity now that some of us may have not had, and it's allowed us to play a different style of basketball this year, which is quite exciting. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Yep. Real quick, what, what's the moment you're looking forward to most this season? Um, Any particular game you got circled on the calendar or anything? Always. Okay. I'm torn between Gonzaga and BYU, but then you always look forward to the LMU games as well, the rivalry yep. games. So. Absolutely. Well, in the WCC this year, they're all going to be great games. Yeah, of course. Looking all forward to watching you guys play. So thanks for stopping right. by. It was great thank to you. meet you. Thank you. Appreciate you taking Appreciate the time. It. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right, that was uh, Pepperdine forward Mia Sadie, and we've got Colby Ross on deck here. Colby's going to join us right as the men are starting their dunk contest out on the court. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah, sir. How, how you doing, doing, man? I'm doing good. How are good you? to see you. How's it going, Colby? Good. How are you? Man, year three, year three, junior yeah. year. We got, we're going four for four, right? Yes. I got to interview you hey. here all four years, yep, man. Every, every year. <laughs> so here's, here's the deal, Colby. I know, I know you're a humble guy, but when we were talking freshman year, we weren't sure if you were going to start or not. Mm -hmm. This year, Andy Katz, who's a national writer, said you're one of the best point guards in the country. When you hear those words, what goes into your mind? Um, it means a lot. Um, I just know my coaches and teammates trust me to make the plays, you know, down the stretch, make the plays to win the games. And uh, that uh, statement holds a lot, so I just have to go out and prove it every night. But I know my my work ethic and everything I do outside, you know, practice is going to pay off. Yeah, and talking about uh, just preseason talks surrounding you guys, not only you, but the whole team. I mean, you guys have been picked in multiple polls to be top four in the conference this year. Um, a lot of a lot of writers and, and other coaches are really high on you guys. Um, so do you think that hype challenges you guys or pressures you guys? Um, I think it challenges us, um, but we try not to look, look in too much. We look, try not to look too much into that because, you know, rankings or whatever, they can be a good thing, but they can be a bad thing as well. So we just try to stay uh, level-headed throughout it all and uh, just show what we can do. This is uh, year two under Coach Romar. So uh, you had the big coaching change in between your first and second year. Well, what's, what's the biggest advantage to having that continuity in the head coach entering this year? Um, I think everyone knows what to expect. Everyone knows the role on the team. I mean, the younger guys are coming in, getting adjusted, but the guys who have been here, we know what we need to do. We know the role. We know how coaches, you know, what he wants out of us. So um, it's not too hard, and we just have to play hard and play good defense and, you know, hopefully get the job done. Right, and Colby, last year you were, you led the WCC in assists, you were sixth nationally, you have kind of a slashing style of play. Um, how much does it build your confidence knowing you have 
big guys in the paint that you could dump it down to, like Kess or Cam. And now you got some great shooters you can kick it out to with Skyler coming in and Jaw Jaw's shot just coming around. Um, so what's it like for you to be able to pass the ball and be confident that your teammates are going to hit the shot? Um, it's great. I think I play with some of the best players in the country. That's in my opinion, of course. But I honestly think anytime I pass it to one of my teammates, it doesn't matter who it is, they're going to knock it down. And I think that's how it all oh my God, that was a crazy dunk. That was three people. Yeah, great ball. Yep. Oh, here, we're going to see it again here. Great. Right. Over three? Yeah. He's legit. He's legit. <laughs> yeah, Stormo's what, 6'8"? Wow. Who's, who's yeah. your pick to win this dunk contest? Is it that guy right there or you got yeah. somebody else? It's, right now it's Dre, but it might be Kessler. It might be Kessler. Kessler which, won it last year. Yeah, so. We could know, have a battle on our yes, hands here. It will. All right, Colby, going into this season, you guys play three Pac-12 teams. You guys have a, a tough WCC schedule as well. Uh, any particular games you have circled on the calendar or that you're looking forward to? Um, everyone's important, but um, this, I think our first game versus Cal is going to be, you know, a good idea of how we're going to be the, in this, you know, this year. But I think uh, when we play UC Irvine and Abilene Christian, teams that have gone to the tournament, um, it's going to be a challenge. But, you know, I think we're up for the challenge. And then we get to play teams that, you know, are big time, like Arizona, USC. So, you know, we're excited for the opportunity. Does it mean anything to uh, face Marty Wilson again at Cal? Um, no, I mean, yes, I you know, still have love for my coach, old coach, but um, at the end of the day, it's just a game, and I'm going to play the same way, and we're all going to play the same way no matter who it is. And, Colby, I kind of touched on it earlier with uh, your teammates and some newcomers coming in this year um, with Skylar Chavez, who is a shooter. Um, Keith getting to see the court this year after having to redshirt, and then some talented freshmen. So what are you excited about with the newcomers coming in? Um, I'm going to start off with Skylar, uh, one of the best pure shooters I've seen. I mean, he's a hooper. You know, he can really score the ball, you know, really shoot. So we're excited for that. Uh, Keith Smith, um, really high basketball IQ. Um, didn't get to see as many minutes as he wanted at Oregon, but we know what he's capable of, and he's going to have a big year. And then for the freshman, um, Majuk Dang, very athletic, um, high energy type of guy. Um, we're excited. And then uh, Cedric Altman is just, you know, a pure ho hooper. You know, he comes out, he's always ready to go, high energy. He's going to give you all he has. And then Jan Zedek, um, freshman from the Czech Republic. You know, European style game can pick and pop, you know, make smart plays, you know, the new style of a center basically. So that's what, you know, we have and that's what we're excited for. Colby, uh, you scored uh, almost 700 points last year. Uh, I don't know if you know this, you might, you might, you <laughs> might not. I think you know where I'm going. <laughs> You're 680 points away from becoming Pepperdine's all-time leading scorer. You're definitely on pace to break the assist record too. All you need is 76. What do those types of accomplishments mean to you as a player and, and as a Pepperdine Wave? Uh, it means a lot. Um, it just shows my hard work is starting to pay off. I mean, I know I couldn't do any of this without my teammates. I give them, you know, all the credit because I'm not doing anything, any of this without them. And my coaches giving me the freedom to do what I want and just, you know, believing in everything I do with, you know, my family morals, family core values, everything they taught me. It means a lot to, you know, be close to this achievement. And, you know, I hope, hopefully I make the, you know, way, way family crowd at the end of the day. All right, and as Majuk throws one down there in front of a big crowd here in Firestone, um, any message you want to send to the Waves fans this year and try and get them to come out to some games. You guys have a Gonzaga at home this year. Um, uh, so just message you want to send to the fans uh, who want to see a great team play in this field house this year. Um, we just want to say um, come out and support us. Um, we're not going to guarantee any win. That's not what we're going to do, but we're going to guarantee every night we're going to go out and play our hardest. You know, and then we're, we have a fun style of, of basketball that we play, and I think the fans will love it. And I think, you know, the more we win, the more the fans will come. But if the fans start coming now, it'll definitely help us. And just when whoever comes to the games, we appreciate them no matter what. Definitely wouldn't hurt to have this type of electric atmosphere at, at some of your regular season games. So yes, let's agree. make it happen. Yes, sir. Um, you guys were picked fourth 
in the polls, WCC. I know it doesn't really matter to you guys inside the dressing room, but what would you define a successful season as? Um, winning the WCC championship and going to the NCAA tournament. I think at the end of the day, if you're playing college basketball, you want to go to the NCAA tournament. And that's my goal, that's everyone else's goal. And that's what we're striving to get to. So, you know, we have a long way to get there, but that's what we're you know, aiming for right now. All right. I think that's all the questions oh, we have. Uh, you want to hang out with us and watch the dunk yeah, contest? Yeah, we can hang out a little bit. More than happy to have you. <laughs> Appreciate it. We still have, we got uh, Dre, he was, he was, who still has to dunk. I think Dre and Majuk are, are the final guy. All righty, yeah. here it is. He had a little between the legs action going on. And Dre's got a size advantage here. He's what, 6'8"? <laughs> Right there. That's pretty what was, nice. What was your, what would you rate that, Colby? You're our guest uh, judge here. Yeah, watch it again on the monitor. That's a, like that's an eight, eight point five. I just know the dunks he can do, and it, you know that's that's it, really good. It's yeah, good. From I mean, you know from seeing if you're a fan, but knowing what he can do, I'll give it an eight because I know he's he's done some. He's more capable crazy. of yeah, more. He's more. Yeah. Yep. And here's the freshman. Yep, the freshman. Majuk. Let's see what he can do. All right, so we, we've had a dunk contest the past couple of years. If, uh, if the men's basketball team had a three-point shootout, who would win it? Um, any basketball player is going to say themselves, so I'm a, of course I'm going to say myself. But you might have the stats to back it up, though. <laughs> <laughs> I would say me or uh, Skyler, uh, for sure. I think either of uh, But, I mean, you never know. We have some really good shooters on the team. Cam, Kez, like, Ja, like, we have some really good shooters, so. You know, it's up in the air. Is he going to jump he's, over he's, President Gash or is President, President Gash going to throw him here. a lob? Looks like he's blindfolding them. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, you got you to gotta love anybody who's bringing a little theatrics to the dunk contest, right? That's part of the show. Yeah, he's going to get some style points, definitely, if he gets this one down. I'm excited to see this. Yeah. Wow. Oh wow. This is this is bold right here. You gotta complete this. Yeah, you gotta this, complete this. This is one you the can't president, miss. You can't hit him. The crowd rising to its feet here at Firestone Fieldhouse. I think we all want to see how this turns out. Oh yeah, let's go Maju. You got it, baby. Crowd's on their feet. I would say I love the showmanship. We didn't have this last year. <laughs> yeah, we you know. Didn't. Oh, wow. Oh, no. he made oh it look my easy. God. That was very easy. He had room to spare. Hey, okay, Let's see it again. Oh, clear. Oh, 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 yeah. he, didn't, he didn't need any help. Is that a winner, Colby? That's, that's the winner. That's right a winner? Now. Wow. That's big ju time. Judges are about to make it official, but I think that's the, oh, and he gets the tie. Right. Yep, that's the winner. Oh, you got to love that. All right, he does get it. He does get it. Were you nervous out there? Were you nervous out there at all? Oh heck yeah! I didn't know what he was gonna do. What do you think? We got Sam Lagana, the voice of the LA Rams, addressing President Cash here. Well, we've got a lot of good stuff that's coming up. Thank you. How about a nice hand for President Gash and our head coach, Lorenzo Romar, and our head coach, Kristen Dowling. We've got something special. All right, cool. This Blue and Orange comes to a close. How was your third year here? How's your third Blue and Orange? Let me see. It's been great. I mean, every year I think it gets better. Um, you know, I'm impressed with everything we've done and the, you know, all the students coming out and family coming out for Wake Weekend. I think it's great. So, as you see the step team performing, oh, they always close Blue and Orange Madness with yeah. a bang here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta love DJ Romar on the music, oh, too. He's big time. Big time. Yep. He brings the energy. You can, you can, you can even sense it here. Oh, for and this sure. building is rocking. For sure. As the 
sub team performance here. Colby, for, as a player, it's got to feel good for you when uh, you see things like the step team showing out for you guys. The cheerleading team like tripled in size yes, this year. Yes, I saw that. Uh, fans pack in Firestone Fieldhouse. Uh, it's it's got to make an impact on you guys. You guys are conscious of, of who's in the arena when you're playing. Yeah, I don't think fans un understand the impact they have. I mean, you know, if an opposing team comes in and we have, you know, a full a full crowd, I think it affects them. So I don't think the fans understand how much of an impact, but I'm just, you know, proud to see that, you know, who's all out here right now. That's yeah, a packed house. We'd love to see it again later in the year when you guys take on Gonzaga. They announced today it's going to be on ESPN. Yes. Um, so yes. we need to we need this place full for that one. I agree. I agree. It'll be exciting. There's nothing like a national audience. That's just a national opportunity, right? Uh, that is true. Yep. That is very true. Pepperdine step team, always a crowd favorite here at Firestone Fieldhouse. We're still with Colby Ross. You can stay here as long as you want, man. <laughs> You're welcome here anytime. Thank you, thank you. about uh, the Wood Legacy Tournament you guys are heading to. You guys start off against Arizona. Uh -huh. It's a big, important tournament as well. Uh, how excited, obviously that first round matchup is a big one, but the other teams in that tournament as well. Uh, what's it like just to be on that type of stage, the, the neutral site tournament? What's it like playing in those? And, and what are you excited for about that Wood Legacy? Um, I'm just excited because it's just another opportunity um, for, for the team to, you know, get better and you know strive to get to the NCAA tournament. So we're excited for that. We know we're gonna be playing some, you know, big teams with Arizona. They'll probably be a top ten, top fifteen team, you know, preseason. So you know, we're excited for that. And um, you know, just the opportunity to get better. Uh, that's all we need to do. Focus on is getting better every single day. And we're gonna take the opportunity. Absolutely. I'm I, I know I'm looking forward to that one. Any anytime you get a chance to Prove yourself against Pac-12 competition. Um, it's it's got to be a motivating factor for you just to say, hey, you know, we can we can compete with these types of teams. We're we're not afraid of this stage. We're not afraid of this level of competition. Yeah, I mean, I think we're willing to show um, that Pepperdine is more than just an academic school. You know, or more than. You know, just a good view of the school. You know, we have a good, a good basketball program here, and we're, you know, we have good sports here, so we're here to prove it no matter what. All right, you guys are on the up and up with 10 win improvement from your freshman year to your sophomore year. Um, I don't know if you guys can 
improve by 10 games again, but you guys are gonna get to test yourself right off the bat, traveling to Cal, traveling to USC. Um, so are you excited to just get it going right off the bat this year? Oh yeah, I'm excited. Uh, 20, 25 days away till the first game, I'm very excited. I know last season, it was a 10 win improvement, but it should have been a 15 win improvement in my eyes. There were a lot of games uh, we lost at the end that we should have won, but uh, I'm excited because I know what the team is capable of and we're just, uh, we're just gonna prove everyone wrong, prove everyone right, so we're excited. You can feel the whole arena shaking right <laughs> yeah. now. They definitely turned the bass up <laughs> on this step team performance. What, what are some of the songs on your pregame playlist? Ah, uh, ooh. What are you That's feeling right now? Uh, right now, I, I'm listening to Gunna, uh, Young Thug. Um, you know, I always have some Drake in the playlist. You always gotta have to go. Um, and then, ah, uh, let me see. And then probably some J. Cole, no matter what. Uh, that's always gotta have that's some solid. Okay, when you guys are in the locker room, who's who's got the speaker? Who's playing it? Whose playlist is it? Um, it's usually it's usually either Jadi or um, one of our uh, managers, uh, Ryan. He's usually on the speaker. He has he has good music, so it's uh, legit. All right, well, this is this is the part where uh, the fans can get yeah, on the floor uh -huh, and uh -huh. do the Cupid shuffle. So. Uh, Colby, we'll, we'll let you get back with your team. Thank, Thank you for spending all the time with us that you did. Appreciate you coming out for a third year in a row. Yeah, we'll I let you go. You Thank you Thanks so much. a lot, Colby. Best yeah. of luck this year. We're looking it. forward to it. Yeah, thank you. All right, good to see you. All right, this is, as I mentioned, the part of the show where everybody goes out, does the Cupid Shuffle. Athletes, fans, cheerleaders, doesn't matter. Everybody's welcome, and it's a fitting end. Uh, to this one huge party that is Blue and Orange Madness. Right, and it kicks off the bigger party of Waves Weekend, and right now Sam's letting everybody know to come out. Uh, Saturday, November 9th is when the men will kick off the season here at Firestone Fieldhouse against UC Irvine, and then we mentioned the women have an exhibition against Biola on October 29th, and then their home opener, their true home opener, is Sunday, November 10th against Cal Poly. Absolutely, and... Uh, if you want to catch the waves before you see them here at Firestone Fieldhouse, they, uh, both teams test themselves with Pac-12 opponents. Uh, the, the men, excuse me, go at Cal November 5th. The women travel to Wazoo. Uh, and you can watch uh, all of Pepperdine's home games, uh, especially in the WCC. You can watch it right here on the WCC network. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing them um, throughout the year here in Firestone Fieldhouse. Um, should be a good go of it for both teams this year. All right, well, we're, we're putting the finishing touches on uh, yet another successful Blue and Orange Madness. Carl, what were some of the highlights for you? Oh, the dunk contest was great, and then uh, the, the half court shot, um, the one we that almost went time. in, there was actually a chance. Um, but also to see uh, President Gash getting involved, like you mentioned, I think last week I saw him at volleyball, tennis, and soccer in the same day. Um, so it's, it's nice to have him around and invested in the athletic department as well. Uh, President Gash certainly very involved in athletics, and uh, not just athletics, but every part of student life uh, out here at Pepperdine. Looking forward to uh, big things to come with him as president. Also love that dunk contest. Love the little bit of showmanship this year. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's one thing to throw down a great dunk and have that athleticism. It's another thing to play to the crowd and have them behind you. Really saw that from Deng tonight. It looked like Majuk had done it before. I don't know if he's throwing, like, doing dunk contests in high school. Um, but, yeah, he definitely played to the crowd and was able to take down the defending champ in Kes and then a real high flyer in Dre. Oh, absolutely. It, neither of those two are any slouch when it comes to uh, dunking the basketball. It's also it's always great just to hear from the players and coaches straight from them uh, about what they expect for this season. Always nice of Colby Ross to to hang out even past his uh, allotted question right. time and, and just chat with us. Yeah, we mentioned that Kobe's always so easy to talk to, always so humble. Um, but yeah, it was definitely great to catch up with Coach Romar as he enters year two and, and meet Coach Dowling as she enters her first year at the helm. Hopefully it'll be a long coaching era for both of them, long and fruitful. Absolutely, well, it's a new day, a new season. We're excited for uh, both men's and women's basketball. 
And uh, we're excited for the rest of Waves Weekend as well. I know the student section is as well. They bust out the Cupid Shuffle. Uh, so we'll fade out and let, the, let you all listen to the Cupid Shuffle, maybe do the dance along at home. Uh, so I'm Paxton Ritchie. And I'm Carl Winter, and Thanks. it's been a great Blue and Orange Madness. Thank you so much for tuning in here on the WCC Network. Have a good night, everybody.